Okay. Basically, we're just checking numbers here again. I mean, like I said, you want to concentrate on the last four. Um, this is 027 right there. This is a, basically a remanufactured unit. It's a brand new case, and I think it's been stamped in after the fact. This one um, has been remanufactured as well. And it said 025 originally, but someone stamped in 27. I don't know if you can see that or not. So, um, so my theory of basically the last four numbers may not be entirely correct. So that's why it's always important to run your serial number, uh, find out what engine you got, and then just tell that to your pump manufacturer, and he should be able to figure out and get you into the correct pump. Um, but more than likely, you're going to have an 027 on those last digits in that area, right in that ballpark. Um, again, engine serial number will also be able to help you out. So I showed you where to get that earlier. Um, now what we got is that we have the new pump and we have the old pump. And what I generally do is I turn them upside down and you've got the bracket. That This is the bottom bracket that needs to go back on and be translated over to this pump. Not all brackets are the same. You may have some that actually attach a little bit differently. Use these bolts right here. Um, that's an older style bracket. I heard those are not really a desirable type because they tend to crack. And if they crack, it tends to miswind the shaft. And yet bad things happen and you have a, uh, already a finicky pump that's not riding correctly and could wear out a lot quicker. And I imagine that that does tend to lead to some failures in some applications. Uh, so what we basically got to do is swap this bracket over to this pump here. So new to old. I don't have to show you that, but just basically what I'm doing. Let me find out what size it is. Go ahead and cut it on. Okay. This is a T50 bit. That's what size these torques are right here. So T50. Uh, you just want to get in there. I use my gun again. Uh, ratchet and wrench. Uh, ratchet and possibly someone helping you hold this is a little bit um, a little bit harder to do. But this little gun works pretty good. It takes them out real easy. And you just translate one over to the other. Make sure you start the first couple of threads so you don't cross thread. And swap your stance. And... If you want to put a little Loctite, blue Loctite on them, go ahead. I don't. Never had a problem with them backing off, but again, personal preference. Take the plugs out. I generally generally take these out and just kind of swap them over the new, the old one, because you're going to be putting these back in when you send your core back. Uh, just use the regular open end. They come out pretty easy. Now, this one had a fast system on it, so we had this little fitting. Normally, you'd have a banjo bolt. If you have a fast system, it's a 17 millimeter. I want to say the banjo bolt is pretty close. To, I think it is 17, either 17 or 18. Okay. Now, usually, any manufacturer of these VP44s are going to give you these new, uh, basically washer gaskets, O-rings, however you want to call them. They're more or less for banjo bolts. If you have a fast system, chunk those in the trash. You don't need them. These are for your return line. Notice you got two different size fittings. You got small ones are for the pressure line. The large ones are for the return line. And if you go back and find your return line fitting that we talked about earlier, I usually just kind of throw those on there just to kind of help keep a hold of them. You know, you'll be pulling them off a little bit later, but that's where those go more or less. And these, like I said, in this particular application, going in the trash. Or, say for a rainy day, you know, they always come in handy. This is the keyway. I pulled it out of the new pump, and this is where I was going to tell you where that punch and stake come in and the hammer. I basically pulled it out and then notice that there's an arrow on there. There's numbers. And you always want to make sure that arrow is pointed towards the pump when you put it back in. Usually that's, you, you'll find them, the arrow is always towards the pump. Just keep that beaded into your head. What I generally do is you notice there's already some stake marks on these. Um, usually they're pretty good. But I like to make sure 100% that that thing is not going to come out. So what I do is I get me a punch and I kind of find the center of that little, little keyway. And I add another little stake mark in there. And I always go to the other side. And, and I lose the key. <laughs> more or less, you just want to raise it up just a little bit so it's got a little something to grab onto. So you're just giving a little bit more. And then what I do is I orient the, the arrow where it's up. We go over to our shaft. Since we've got to rotate the shaft anyway, place it down in there. And generally, you got a brass hammer, it works a little better, but as long as you're careful. Just kind of seat it down in there. Now to align the shaft. I got this pump upside down here, and I got this pump upside down here. We're going to come down to my level, Gary. Basically, what we want to do is you want to take this shaft, and you want to look at where the key is sitting, and kind of orient it to somewhere on the housing. 
and just kind of look, you know, just get a good memory of what that looks like right there. So if you want to come more straight ahead where you're looking straight on the shaft, get down a little more so you can see the keyway. There you go. And just kind of memorize where that goes right there. And then come over to this pump and clock the shaft to about the same location. And that's about where that other one is. And that will save you a lot of problems of trying to align this up. And just double check. Spend some time on this. Make sure you got it right. Just go back and forth, back and forth, and just make sure that you just 100% in both of them. It doesn't have to be perfect, but, you know, closer the better, obviously. Okay. I usually like to go around this O-ring and lube it up. I got a little bit of assembly oil for when we assemble the fast systems here. Uh, makes things a little bit easier.